Hi, I'm John King, and welcome to Animal Impact, how livestock can change the landscape, part of my Culture of Curiosity series. But first, let's just start at the beginning, okay? So how farmers observe and question their landscapes determines the choices they make about grazing management and other, other activities. It's farmers' backgrounds and experiences which determines how they see things. For example, once understanding overgrazing is due to time, not animal numbers, it can help farmers reorganise ways of using their livestock to invest and enhance landscapes. Arguably the biggest problem on any farm is nutrient transfer. On the left, livestock have accumulated paddock fertility in the shadow of a shelter belt, causing weed problems. On the right, the difference in biomass from one side of the fence to the other was caused by parking livestock overnight on a postage stamp many years ago. This is how stock density utilising natural herding and camping instincts can improve pasture performance. It's cheap, effective and long lasting. Now most farmers think what I'm talking about is this, but it's much more deliberate as the research shows. Okay, the impacts of stock density were established last century with Peter Sears' research. This night and day grazing is basically one of the simplest grazing projects farmers can undertake on their farm spent a week doing this as a free to fail trial. Some farmers have used two thirds of the area during the day and one third of the night instead, for example. These effects of this grazing technique last for years, meaning the rate of return on investment would outcompete almost any bought technology. Shifting a fence is much cheaper than buying technology, but especially of anything that requires a monthly payment. And here is an early example from a property in Rada He in the 1960s. It's, it's one of the most spectacular. Mr. Barton claimed many environmental and production benefits by using his flock to transfer and target nutrients. By switching investment from fertilizer to fencing, he reaped rewards by accruing fertility through livestock manure. As you can see by the photo, the manure was from hard feed, so fly problems were low as evidenced by ewe condition. Now this is how he tripled carrying capacity in paddocks within 12 months. So here's just a real simple demonstration here about how it might work. And as usual, it's a pretty fiddly thing because you know your livestock um, don't often go where you want them to go. Yet by simply squeezing livestock into a confined area for a short time, they can deposit dung and urine with greater evenness. And that evens up the fertility across the paddock. We can use stock density for other purposes too. Here you can see where the wilding pines are growing and where they are not. These outcomes aren't recognised by authorities, but farmers can cre easily create them. Another method to achieve animal impact, but without fences, is to use attractants to create herd effect. Here, the, the attractant changes the behaviour of the livestock, and that to allow them to concentrate in their own time to produce similar outcomes. Again, research backs this up. Here are some examples or methods to create herd effect, including minerals, shade, and even the novelty of this branch here. You can see the area just around the branch is darker than the rest of the paddock. And that's where lambs have had an opportunity to come together and play while their mothers graze. So no stress here, just tapping into, into the curiosity of the young. The practice of bale grazing combines both techniques of animal impact. Fencing the animals in to create the stock density while using the bales to create the herd effect. The benefits are easy to see. Now compare this to what normally happens. Here is where a bale feeder has been left too long and the resulting compaction and nutrient excess has created bare soil and broadleaf weeds. Here the nature of grazing has changed soil conditions resulting in undesirable plants. This really demonstrates how grazing actually influences plant communities. And here's another piece of appropriate research, this linking post-grazing residual to live weight gain and pugging. It shows post-grazing residual has a greater influence on the litter incorporation than live weight. So the higher the post-grazing residual, no matter the season, the less pugging, but also the greater live weight gain. It's a real win-win situation. Of course, this is influenced by the length of time soil surfaces are exposed to livestock, the thickness of the litter, the plasticity of the soil, I think that's the right word, and uh, the mob size. Generally, the more litter, the less damage to the soil surface. When those relationships are understood, then the practice of single strand grazing with sheep can become reality. 
simple but not that easy so i said earlier your background and experiences determine your beliefs the trick is to be curious when your beliefs are confronted i'm john king and if this or any of my other videos have given you pause to think give me a call